bucket loads, you know, I could cover the hole in this bit. What, you know, it's just well, keeping it realistic. See, what I'm thinking what is, is that could you go, you know, find points over there, and then bring the light wire over here, and then back down again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea came to me as when as the, the, the Midland Arts Centre was being rebuilt, the uh, Buildings Works programme asked for, uh, asking for ideas in order to um, put, bring some public art into the building. And the idea I had was to try and actually extend the gallery space of the Midland Arts Centre out of the building into this park and sort of nature reserve which yeah. runs a, this incredible linear reserve that runs across 17 miles of Birmingham going from uh, its source in the Wassily Hills up to Spaghetti Junction where it joins the River Tame then flowing into the River Trent and then the River Humber and ends up in the sea in, at Hull. The river is actually acting as a inspiration for a, a series of artworks which we hope to present in 2012 which coincides with the Midland Arts Centre's uh, 50th anniversary. The Midland Arts Centre has been a place dear to my heart since uh, the age of five years old in coming here and doing pottery and drawing and uh, creating performance art projects here and live artwork and actually creating uh, a sort of history of outdoor events within the park. So this project is very important in lots of different ways both in a personal history but also a cultural history of Birmingham. That cultural history goes into the natural history which is involved in the nature and conservation that happens along the river but also the historical archaeological past of Birmingham. The first tribe of Birmingham, the Beringers, settled on the River Ray in uh, Ladywood which is downstream towards the, the city centre. Now we have a series of cultural things happening on the river, the Custard Factory and the Middle of the Arts Centre, probably the two of the most important cultural centres along the river itself. So raising awareness of the river is one thing, but also using the unique quality of the river in order to explore a series of so dynamic artworks. Oh, this is Some of the, the projects we've been involved in in the past have been involved in nighttime events and staging theatrical sound, experimental sound, uh, trails and compositions, working with dancers, actors, performers, automated instruments, and it's light, sound and light installation. Through the research and development phase we've come to a point where we're now doing practical experiments on the river and we've, the narrative and concept of the project is really starting to take form as we're really getting to know the river and starting to work within the restraints of its physical and aesthetic properties. So over the past few days artists have been meeting up here and working on different pieces along the river to see what the potential is. Some of those have been ideas that we've had in the studio, that we've tested out, that we haven't been happy with, so we've discarded those. And other things have been really exciting new developments that have come out of the real creative process of, of uh, trying things out, experimenting, making mistakes, and working with the materials and the materiality of the landscape space. So we're exploring a landscape, a linear landscape, and we hope to be able to invite the audience to walk through a journey along this culvertised river that we're looking at now. Conceptually, we've split the river up into two sections. One is the old Victorian culvertised section of the river, which we're sitting in now. And that has uh, an, an, you know, an amazing architectural landscape space and a ready-made walkway with fantastic hanging points along the way. And it has an accessibility to it where you can get really near to the water and very easy flat access walking route but it's very little used and it's awareness. Even with people I know that have lived most of their lives in Birmingham, you say, we're walking along the riverway. Where's that? How is that? So it's a hidden river and, a, um, and an underused river. But at the same time, within sections of the community, it's very much a loved river. There's a river Ray heritage trail. There's a Sustrans cycle route along it and a, a lot of moves of conservation. So people really do feel passionate about conserving what is here in this river. So the two sections of the river 
are very much the two sides of Birmingham from a cultural and a natural history point of view. So, so the culvertized part of the river that we're here in now, we were investigating the relationship between man, technology, it, uh, our relationship with nature and um, exploring the ideas of new ways of representing biodiversity and the forces of nature so really working with the fluid dynamics the kind of birds that we see flying up and down here and emulating those and celebrating those but also in, in a very I suppose more relating to how the aesthetic of the center of the city and how the how you know the sort of voice of the city of the urban street as it were halfway along the trail it then opens up into more open landscape wild part of the park if you like and within that we hope to be able to investigate a different side of the aesthetic and conceptual relationship with nature embracing what happens in Birmingham as a multicultural city as well. We hope to be able to explore a number of different approaches that different artists will bring to the idea of a group exhibition. So in a sense it's a collaboration, but it also allows artists to breathe and express their own individual ideas within the idea of a collective group or like a com uh, an informal company. Over the past few days and today uh, we're, we're involved in a research and development stage of the project that's been funded by the Arts Council and the McAdoo Work Trust. The intention of that is to actually try the concepts and ideas that we've talked about and thought about in the studio and actually put them into practice along the river. And in that way we can start to find out what the problems are of working on water. As artists that are used to working in uh, outdoor events in the UK, of course we're you know used to dealing with all different kind of weather conditions. We can work to a certain tolerance of rain, so it will be an all-weather event, we're used to that. Uh, most of the things will be in the river anyway, so there's no, not going to be a trouble with waterproofing. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, it's something we are prepared for and, uh, and, and looking at all eventualities. <laughs> From a personal perspective, I've been researching the sort of concept of, of being able to create work which celebrates rivers in all sorts of different ways over the past few years. Creating a sort of overview of what our relationship is with you know, the river in culture, particularly within Birmingham, it's been ignored for too long. So that kind of celebration is a, a really important part of the spirit that we have and our relationship with nature and in the case of the River Ray, how it's been landscaped in quite a severe way in order to be able to control its forces. As you move from, you know, along this one kilometre of river here, you will actually be part of walking through a sound composition. That will be made up of a series of sound generating uh, elements everything from performers to automated woodpeckers, electronic sound, sounds moving across the surface of the water, across the top, across your heads, across your field of visions, instrument players that will be floating in the river or walking in the river or promenading. So as you walk along the river, you will really experience a whole journey and an incredibly unique and different world, which, which, which is what we, we, we create at night. People don't come out at night either, they, they generally don't feel secure to be able to walk in a place like this at night. And the gates are generally locked at night as well, so what we end up doing is, is creating a world that people didn't even know exists, not only in their imaginations, but actually within their own landscape. So we should be reclaiming these places at night as well. <laughs>